And they ask students, look at the bones in that fin, and look at the quite different architecture of the bones here in this limb of an amphibian. Do you really think this kind of changed into that? And the narrative in the book goes like this. How many different transitional species were required to bridge this gap? We don't know. But we do know that no such transitional species have ever been recovered. There aren't any. Now, the argument that they're making in graphic form looks like this. On the line from fish to the earliest land vertebrates, we have a low fin fish like the Sinopteron, we have a very early amphibian like the Theostega, and we have no transitional species between them. We got ourselves an unbridgeable gap. There's no polite way to say it, but even at the time this book was published, that statement was simply false, because it turns out we did indeed have two very well understood transitional forms, and if it's in a campus they existing between them, and we also understood the line of descent by which these guys actually evolved into land tetrapods. So far from an unbridgeable gap, this is actually part of a very well understood evolutionary transition. But tonight, I'd like to go a little further. I'd like to look at the critical part of this transition, which is the leap from water onto land. And in particular, I'd like to say, can we find a transitional form at the exact fish to amphibian transition. Panderichthys was a fish, that's for sure, but its limbs were so strong and so robust that it clearly could have lifted itself out of the water onto the land in the mud shallows. Acanthostag is an amphibian, but it's the most fish-like amphibian that has ever lived. It has fish-like internal gills, which no living amphibian has today. It has a fish-like head and fish-like tail, and very, very short of limbs. As you would expect that they had evolved from low fins. But I want to go and say, can you find a form right here? And I'm going to show you a video of a scientist who led an expedition to find exactly such a form. Here it is. In 1999, paleontologist Neil Schubert and his colleagues set out to find just such a creature. What evolution enables us to do is to make specific predictions about what we should find in the fossil record. The prediction in this case is clear cut. That is, if we go to rocks of the right age, and the rocks of the right type, we should find transitions between two great forms of life, between fish and amphibian. <laughs> Armed with this prediction, Schubin and his colleagues organized an expedition to one of the most desolate places on Earth, the Canadian Arctic, about 500 miles from the North Pole, where rocks of just the right age are exposed. Money is running out. This is it. We were told this was our last year out there. And then in 2004, third day of the season, a colleague of mine was removing rock and discovered a little snap sticking out the side of the cliff, just like, exactly like this. And he removed more rock, and more rock, and more rock, and it became clear this was a snout of a flat-headed animal. And that's when we knew, flat-headed animal at 375 million years old, this is going to be something interesting. They called it tiktaalik which means large freshwater fish in the language of the local Inuit people. And it's one of the most vivid transitional fossils ever discovered, showing how land animals evolved from primitive fish. Over here you have a, a fish about 380 million years old. And when you see any good fish, it has scales on its back and fins. You compare that to an amphibian, you find a creature uh, that doesn't have scales, and it's modified the fins to become limbs, uh, arms and legs. And it has very different. It has a flat head with the eyes on top and the neck. What we see when we look at the fossil record, at rocks